I went out to the hazel wood because a fire was in my head and cut and peeled a hazel wand and hooked a berry to a thread. And when white mosses were on the wing and moth-like stars were flickering out, I dropped the berry in a stream and caught a little silver trout. When I had laid it on the floor, I went to blow the fire of flame. But something rustled on the floor and someone called me by my name. It had become a glimmering girl with apple blossom in her hair, who called me by my name and ran and faded through the brightening air. Though I am always wandering through hollow lands and hilly lands, I will find out where she has gone and kiss her lips and take her hands and walk among long dappled grass and pluck till time that times are done the silver apples of the moon, the golden apples of the sun. Hello everyone and welcome back to Wanderer's Footsteps. So this poem that you just heard is a poem called The Song of the Wandering Angus. It is written by William Yeats who was a very famous Irish poet who died back in 1939. Basically, this poem is based on, on an Irish mythology called the Dream of Angus that I talked about in my last video. And in my, in my last video, I said that in the Dream of Angus, this Irish mythology, Angus, the god of love, the god of youth, dreams every night of a beautiful girl. So he decides to go in search for her. And three years later, he finds her and he finds his true love. However, in this poem, The Song of the Wandering Angus, William Yeats changes, let's, let's say he makes a bit of a twist, he changes the ending to reflect his own life. So basically in this poem, Angus or Yeats himself finds a beautiful girl, however, she disappears completely. He goes in search, he goes in search for her for many years until he becomes old, but he never found her again. But the thing is not like from this poem we learn that it's not really the destination or finding the girl that matters, but he talks more also about the path he is taking in order to find her and in order to understand a bit more because I think there are some really beautiful meanings in this poem let us go a bit deep inside this poem and understand some of its phrases. So Yeats begins his poem by saying there's a fire in my head but what kind of fire? It's a fire of inspiration, the fire to reach for something higher than ourselves and then he says that he gets a hazel wand which is basically a magical instrument on which he puts a berry and drops it into a stream. And then Yeats tells us, the poet who actually represents Angus in this poem, tells us that he catches a fish, a trout more specifically. But we all know that this poem is not really about a person searching for food. It's about a person searching for something higher and greater than what we have here on earth. So if you remember the dream of Angus that I published last week, it is said in the mythology that the girl that Angus is looking for has a special ability. She can turn into a human form for a whole year and then become in a, in a form of a bird for another year. And same thing happens in this poem. Yeats tells us that this guy Angus catches a fish, a trout, that transforms into a glimmering girl as he says. And this glimmering girl says his name before she disappears. And this is where Angus, who represents also the poet, go in search of this glimmering girl. Though I am always wandering, which explains that the poet really spent years of his life until he became old searching for her. I will find out where she has gone and kiss her lips and take her hands. Basically, just like Angus, the poet goes on a journey to find her. And this journey will take him to reach different worlds and different realities. Because as long as he is looking for her, she will guide him to unimaginable worlds. And walk among long dappled grass and pluck till time and times are done. The silver apples of the moon, the golden apples of the sun till times and times are done. Basically, we all know that time does not have an ending. So which represents that he's gonna keep searching for her for all eternity. He's never gonna stop searching for her. Should it be in his, for perhaps in his human form or in the other universe, in other realities, he's gonna be going to after, after this life, after this existence. The apples of the moon, the moon that is present at what time and disappears at another time. So basically the moon is present at night and then during the day is not here anymore. And it can also be a representative for hope that sometimes he loses hope but then the next day he gains hope again that he is going to find her so he continues his path. 
And then he also talks about the apples of the sun, the sun that is in the mythology, usually in the old mythology, always represents eternity. So according to this poem, if one asks ourselves, where is Yeats now? In my opinion, Yeats is still searching for this girl, is still following the path that she drew for him, a path that will take him to different worlds, to different realities, where his soul can roam freely beyond our corporeal uh, existence, let's say. The poem represents, in my opinion, the long search for love that is in reality not obtainable, that does not exist in, the, in reality or perhaps in this reality does not exist. However, the journey into achieving it, the journey into finding it is one that is worth taking. But the main question remains, what is the relationship between this poem and Yeats' personal life? Because in the Irish mythology, Angus always finds his, uh, his, his love, his perfect love. However, in this poem, Yeats shows us that the true love does not exist or is, is unobtainable, let's say. So basically, I did some research and found out that William Yeats was in love with Maud Gunn, who was a very beautiful and confident actress. They spent a lot of time together back in 1889, and she was the main inspiration for all his poems. He fell in love with her, however for her she always told him that the relationship cannot grow more than it is. But since he really really loved her, he proposed to her three times and got rejected three times until she went and married another guy. But then her marriage did not last for more than a few years, she got a divorce and it is said that after she got the divorce, she went back and met with Yeats in Paris in 1988, but even with all that happened, she kept refusing marrying him. So basically he, he, like, he proposed for fourth time and she also rejected. And this is where it gets interesting because at one time Yeats told Modgon that he cannot be happy without her, he is unhappy without her, to which she replied the following. Oh yes you are, because you make beautiful poetry out of what you call your unhappiness and are happy in that. Marriage would be a dull affair, poets should never marry. The world should thank me for not marrying you. So wherever Yeats is now, or Angus, he is still searching for this true love, he is still following the path that this beautiful glimmering girl drew for him, he is looking for this perfect love that he did not find on earth, but perhaps we will find in different realities, in another uh, level of existence, let's say, because in my opinion, life goes uh, much farther than our corporeal existence.